Okay, so here now what you're going to do is this part of it's done. We did our cuts through here. I think that's pretty basic. I think you can handle that. But we do need to put this little knob or nub thing here on the back of this. So what you're going to do is you're going to spin it around here to the back side, uh, start a sketch on this back surface like so. I like it to be in the same orientation, so I'm going to come up here and spin this sketch in that direction. So now we're sitting there in the same orientation. Now we're going to draw this, um, this little part on the back of it from that view X in the book. So when we, drew, when we draw this, you have to be a little bit intentional on the way you draw this. So for example, uh, I'm going to start this up here. I want to be careful not to lock it in anywhere. I don't want to lock it in on this line. So I'm going to come up here, start it right there. Now, I just don't want to draw this down there any old way. I want to make this line parallel to this outside line here. So I'm going to hover over that outside line, come down right there. Notice that parallel symbol shows up. That's making a parallel constraint there. So I'm going to click there and start. Then, coming this direction, I don't want to make this line out here at a 101 degree angle, but I do want to make that angle at a 90 degree angle. And if I do that, notice 90 degrees, my perpendicular constraints show up. So I'm going to click there, be careful not to lock it in anything else, and start it there. Then I'm going to come up in this direction. Notice here I have parallels and perpendiculars both showing up, constraining that parallel and perpendicular to my previous line. So I'm going to click there. From there, going straight up. Notice as I go straight up here, it's kind of hard to see there. There I have the constraint showing that it is locked in parallel to the origin plane up and down, vertical. So I want it either like that, or if I go over here and hover over this side and come back. Oops, try that again. Notice it'll give me that parallel constraint, making it parallel to that other side. So any meeny, miny, mo, either way there is good. I'm just going to go ahead and finish it up right here where I had it. Come on, get my parallel locked in right there. Now here, I want to make this line go back. Again, I want my perpendicular constraint showing up there, and click there. There, I have an extra little line showing up there. I want to trim that off, so I'm going to hit X and trim that. And now that block is drawn in there. Now all I need to do is dimension this. So let's throw in all of our dimensions first. Here, we're going to make this two units away there. Uh, we're going to dimension this. And I do expect you to look at the book and find these dimensions. So I'm going to make this one. 12, I believe there. I'm doing this by memory. I don't even have my book open. From here to here, it is 24, if I remember correct. Not 244. 24. Um, and then one more here, I believe. There to there. And that one is 6, I do, th do think. So there that thing is. But now what we have is this thing will slide up and down this slope. I don't want it to slide up and down that slope. What I want it to do, I want it to be locked in position. And the measurement they give you for that is... Off of this point that's up here, it's 36 or 38 units down, whatever that measurement is. You'll have to look at your book there to find that. So what I'm going to do is we're going to put a point up here in that area right there. I'm then going to do a vertical constraint, constrain that point vertically with the middle of that U right there. Locks in a position there. That point, if you look in your book, from there is up 32 units. I'll put that up 32, and that's got that point locked in blue. Now what I need to do is I need to dimension from that point to the midpoint of this line. But notice, it can't select the midpoint of that line. So we're going to have to do another little step. A couple ways you can do this. One, you could put a point on that dimension to it. But what that does, it gets you the dimension there so it's at an angle. Not good. A better way of doing this, this is one of our students, Aaron Kohler, actually showed me this. Kind of cool. Um, different way of doing it than what I did. Um, here, notice right there, and actually I'm going to slide this down a little, so I know I'm locking into the line and not the middle of that. So I'm going to go again, I'm going to draw a line to the middle of my blue line. Come on, lock into the midpoint. Hmm, it's not wanting to lock into my midpoint there. What is going on? There we go. Midpoint there, perpendicular to that side thing. And you know, honestly, that did not lock into my midpoint. I'm struggling here. Let me see what's, all, what's going on with this. Huh. I think that is the midpoint right there. I don't know why it's not giving me a green dot. So I'm going to try that and see what happens. Go there. I'm going to go perpendicular to this side. If it moves with this, I got it. And notice it does not move with that. Um, I'm struggling there with this for some reason. If you have a problem like that, hopefully I can make this work this way. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put a point. Can I get a point to lock into the midpoint of that? Hmm. I don't know why my inventor is functioning differently here. 
trying to figure this out. I'll pause and I'll be back. All right. So what I did, what I figured out the issue was, when I did this, I had all of my fillets in there. And with those fillets being there that I'm highlighting now, I was wanting, it was wanting to constrain to the midpoint of that fillet instead of the midpoint of my line. So all I did is I got rid of my fillets. And you shouldn't have your fillets there anyway because that should be the last step. I'm just actually adding an extra one of these on so you guys can see this. So doing that, having the fillets on there first, kind of messed with you or messed with me. So you don't want to do those fillets until the very last step, which is what I tell you to do anyway. Me having the fillets on there was kind of a mistake. So now you should be able to do this. No problem. should lock into the midpoint of that blue line there. Perfect green dot. Come down here perpendicular to this side right there. That's great. Notice as I move this, that line moves with it. Um, I do want to change that line to a construction line. So I highlight it there by clicking on it and come up here and change that to a construction line. Now that's perfect. Now what I have to do is I have to add this point in. Um, the point is this point that's up here. I did undo a moment ago and I got rid of that point. You should have already added that in before. That is 32 units up. And it is centered up here side to side there. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to dimension from this layout line there to that point. And now notice if I pull this out here, it just does that. But if I come over here, notice it gives me that little parallel line there right by my cursor. Um, if I do that, it makes this parallel in. But notice my issue I have here. Look at that dimension, how it goes at an angle. The reason that goes at an angle is because I selected this corner to dimension two. Remember I always show you never dimension to the corner where that can cause you issues. So instead of doing your dimension like that, you want to dimension from this line, click on it, to this point, and now my dimension is put in there perpendicular to that line I clicked on. And it is running parallel to this 45 degree angle, so that's perfect. I'm going to click there, and put that in, I believe that's dimension of 58. I think that's the right dimension. 58, double check your dimensions always. I'm going to do this by memory. And we're going to finish our sketch there. From there, we're going to extrude this part. Uh, we're going to select our part to extrude. Um, again, I don't have my book open. I should open up my book. Um, is it extruded 10? Is that right? Eh, 10 not enough. Maybe extrude 20. Yeah, let's, let's say it's 20. It might be 22. I don't remember. Not that important here. Again, you guys are going to make yours right. So I extruded that. Uh, that's beautiful. And that thing's done. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this hole in it. Um, so I'm going to start a sketch. The sketch, I'm going to start on this big flat surface there. I'm going to put my point out there on that. I'm going to dimension to my point. I do remember this dimension for sure. That dimension out there is a dimension of 10. And then I want this point centered up. So from there to the midpoint of that line right there. So that is perfect. I'm going to finish my sketch. I'm going to go to my hole command. Should automatically recognize that hole, which it does. That's nice. And now I'm going to put my hole in. This is a threaded hole, or it's called a tapped hole. Notice the picture it looks like little threads drawn on there. So it's called a tapped hole. You're going to change it. It's not ANSI Unified Screw. That's, that's ANSI is the American National Standards Institute. We're not American on this drawing. We're metric. So we're going to go to the metric M profile. And on that, it says it's a metric 12. We're going to go down to this list until we find a 12. Metric 12. And notice it automatically picks a 1.75. This does not tell us specifics on the bolt, but typically on a bolt it will call out this 1.75 or 1.5, 1.25. That's how many threads are per inch. Or no, sorry, per millimeter. 1.75 means there's 1.75 threads per millimeter um, call out for this bolt. And there's all those different options there. So we're going to go with just the default there. Great. Um, I've selected to the through all option, which is great also. And I'm just going to go OK. Notice what that does. It puts you a little picture in there of the threads. If you were to dimension this on a three-view drawing, it would make those um, threads call out correctly on your drawing. From there, we're going to go ahead and use fillet. Um, you notice in your book, it tells you fillet a six. So we're going to fillet that corner, and that corner is what it designates, and those two are a fillet radius of six. I'm going to put those two in. We're going to do another fillet command. This time, we're going to fillet that kind of U there. This one is not a fillet of six. It does not tell you this in the book, but small fillets are a radius of two on this. So we're going to go two for all the other fillets that are not called out specifically by something else. We're going to fillet that one and that one and that one at two. 
So all of those are filled with it too. If you see all the ones I picked there, and go OK. Then one more fill command to get this done, and we pick the base all the way around it, automatically highlights that, and fill it in it too also. So now, that thing is done. That looks beautiful. Uh, we need to put that on the other side. So we're going to use our mirror command. I'm going to mirror. I'm going to select all those things I just did. That extrusion, that hole, that fillet, that fillet, and that fillet. Perfect. Going to go mirror plane and come up here to my origin and pick my correct plane. Right there's my correct plane. The YZ for me. And OK. And you got the whole thing there on your other side. That looks beautiful. All right. The only other thing I need to show you maybe real quick here is this. Um, are all these fillets on this thing. Fillets. Fillets are sometimes tough, especially when you're doing multiple fillets. That's why I'm having you do this one. So we're going to fillet um, a radius of 6. Um, the large fillets, always good to start with your large fillets first. So I'm going to do this one with a radius of 6. And I'm going to do this one with a radius of 6. And we're going to go OK and finish that up. All right. So now from there, once that large fillet's done, at 6 and 6 there, I'm going to go fill it again. This time, next, after you do your large fillets, doing the inside corners is kind of a next good step. So I'm going to finish, fill it that corner. This is not a radius of 6. These are all 2. I'm going to fill it that one at 2. I'm going to come over here, pick this inside corner at 2. Pick that one down there at 2. That one at 2. That one at 2. So just those inside corners there. I'm going to fill it all those at 2. I'm going to go, OK. Then I'm going to repeat, fill it one more time. And now I'm going to fill it this corner, this one, this one here, that one there, okay. there, there, there. Come up here to the top. This one in the book is filleted, but I think that caused an error, so I'm going to go off of that and ignore it. I'm going to fill it that corner. Um, I think that one was filleted, and that one was filleted. And oh, I picked the wrong one. If you pick the wrong one, Hold your shift button and click on that again, and it deselects it. So we're going to go there, and there, there, and I think that one there, and that one there are last, last two fillets. Maybe these two also. I can't remember. Oh, I got the wrong thing. Shift, get rid of that, and there. I think that's all of them. Let's go OK. Oh, it's having troubles blending. Why is it having troubles blending? If it has troubles blending, you just got to narrow it down a little bit. So... Again, I'm going to go fill it, fill it. I'm going to go back here and try again. I'm going to go there, I'm going to go there, there. All these are turning blue. These are all good. There, there, and there, there. All those are blue. Those are good. Um, it might be good just to stop there because this is where it started causing me errors is when I added all these right there. So there, I'm going to hold shift, get rid of that one. That caused me an error. So I'm just going to leave it off. Um... I'm going to go ahead and do this one. That's good. Um, I can't remember. I, I, you're going to have to look. I think that one is filleted. I think that one is filleted. I know that one and that one was filleted. So there we're pretty good. Uh, I'm going to go OK because if I add this one in, it errors out. Ah, errors out. I'm going to hold Shift, get rid of that one. So we're going to leave that there. And then we can try to add this one afterwards. And let's see. It looks like it has an issue with that one. For whatever reason. It, yep. Create, failed, won't do that one. So I'm just going to leave that one off. And, and I'm okay with that. I'm okay with you doing it just like that, building like that. That's great. F6. Um, you do need to put your hole in down here. You should be able to handle that one on your own. You're going to start a sketch on that surface. You're going to use the slot command, dimension your slot, and cut it through. You also do your hole cut here in the bottom of this. This will also be filleted, the outside corners and the bottom of it filleted. Um, I have that fillet done here somewhere. Yeah, there I could suppress that. And there's kind of the way that would be filleted. All again, radius of two down there. Um, so, there you go. Should be good there. I'm going to finish this video and save it for you.